President Muhammad Buhari pleads for Nigerians' understanding while commenting on insecurity. And uh, fears over the 2023 election takes precedence as fire got 19 offices of INEC. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Ann Okong. Welcome back to Still Plus Politics. President Mohamed Buhari has spoken on the issues of insecurity, urging Nigerians to show more understanding. In reaction to this plea, the Arawa Consultative Forum, the People's Democratic Party PDP, and the Pan Niger Delta Forum, PANDEF, have asked the president to desist from giving excuses, saying they expect him to secure the country. And still on the southern state governors, the president of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, has faulted their calls for restructuring, saying they are wrong to make such calls and are to instead restructure their states. Well, joining us to have this conversation is Oponabo Inko Tara, political analyst, and Mr. Chris Feinborn, who's also a political analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you, Marianne, and good evening, Mr. Thank you, as viewers. All right, great. Um, so PANDEF um, and um, social political organization, uh, Arewa Consultative Forum, um, and even the PDP have been speaking up about Mr. President's response to the issue of banditry and the insecurity that we're facing in the country. Yesterday, we did put out that video uh, while he was speaking to State House correspondent um, as he was celebrating Eid. Um, but then the PDP and PANDEF, including Arawa, are saying that Mr. President is making excuses as, uh, you know, as opposed to what he should be doing to deal with the situation. But um, in the midst of all of these things, and this question goes to you, Mr. Feinbone, APC has said that the, that the country has done better and fared better um, now than it did in 2015. Can you explain to us what the APC meant by that? Well, I, I believe um, it depends from where you look at it. And but generally, yes, um, APC has done better. But you can also look at it from other sides and say no. Um, as a few things have gone, seem to have gone out of hand. And um, you will quickly point at some of the dimensions of insecurity that have you know, uh, stepped up. Um, we probably had banditry all along. But it has worsened. That's the truth of the matter. We had um, Boko Haram all along. He's still there. Whether it has come down a little bit or he's still operating at the level it was, is a matter for, the, you know, for argument. But we have the terrorism thing going on in this Northeast. We have banditry now in the, in the North Central and Northwest. Then uh, you now have this one, the IPOP thing, growing, you know, in leaps and bounds in the southeast now. And so it depends on where you look at it. But I think the general thinking is that things have gone out of hand. And a, a, a number of persons I know are very honest with themselves by agreeing that things have really gone out of, uh, you know, out of control. So but what we should be talking about now shouldn't be whether it was worse before, whether it is worse now or better now. What we should be talking about now should be on how, you know, solutions should be preferred on the best way out of the morass we are into now. Definitely, we are not in a good place. I'm just going to ask you again, because you obviously are a member of the APC. Has the APC done well um, in dealing with the issues that we're facing as a country, especially the fact that the APC-led government is in power? Well, APC has done well. But again, there are dimensions that we are not there before. And so you can't quickly do this comparison, you know, and uh, well, think I, you are I, well I, and I, you I are think I want to ask that question no, again. No, there were dimensions that we are not there before. And therefore, you cannot 
put, you know, the past admins and this one together and say, okay, which has done better? Yes, there are dimensions that have been, I mean, uh, sort of improved upon. But with the new windows to other crimes that are coming up, it's very difficult to really say, in all honesty, that we've moved far away from where we were. But then, efforts are being made. But we all agree, everyone agrees. It's not a matter of party now. Everyone agrees that things have gone out of hand and there is need, there is indeed every need to stem, stem what is happening now. Uh -huh. it shouldn't be, we shouldn't be stagnated on the idea of uh, who has done better than the other, which party has done. No, 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 no. What we need now, we are in a, an emergency situation. And this emergency does not come, call for any, uh, house, any sort of uh, look back, reflection. What we need now is action, action, and action. But I, 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 I know that, and I'm, I know that you're just a member of the APC, and you're not, you know, the APC. But because you're the one who's here, I'm going to give you all of these questions. Uh, nobody, nobody has been playing the um, bulk passing or measurement game, but the APC. It's the APC that's been bringing up the statements like, oh, we've done, we fared better than we, we did in 2015. It's the APC that's saying, oh, we've done this, that, and that. And it's not necessarily anybody else. So I'm guessing that um, you're preaching to the choir because the APC in itself should not be the ones coming up with these kinds of sensitive conversation when we know that we're dealing with an emergency, to choose your words. Well, um... Definitely, I don't think KPC just sat down and decided to uh, begin to raise such narratives. A uh, question must have been asked. Oftentimes, people are confronted with very politicized questions. And, of course, you have to give a highly political uh, answer. But then, if we walk away from all of that and want to really be very frank and honest with the situation, we can say that this is not a time to do those comparisons. Who has done better and who hasn't? Definitely, that response must be to a highly political question. And okay. the answer also was delivered in such highly political uh, air, you know. But okay. tackling what is happening now should not call for all those kind of comparison and all that. All right. Let me go to you, Opunabo. Um, the Like I said at the beginning, PANDEF, the PDP, your the party that you belong to and of course um other social cultural organizations are calling out mr president in the midst of all that's been happening and they have outrightly said that the president is making a lot of excuses instead of dealing with the issue why do you think the president is making excuses the president is making excuses because it has failed I mean, it, it has, it's like, um, how would you do put it in our local parlance? A man, a woman that cannot give birth, that is not better, will always blame the second wife. The president is making excuses because he has suddenly realized that hopes have been dashed, you know, during shatter, and uh, they've not been able to deliver on the promises, on his promises. So he comes up with all kinds of excuses, always blaming the past. The mere fact that the president is always living the past, the mere fact that the president is always comparing the present administration with that of good luck, Jonathan, I will tell you that the man is still floundering in the morale. He doesn't appreciate the situation and is looking, it's like a drowning man looking for a stop to hold on to. So he keeps complaining and keeps making excuses. Nigerians are sick and tired of excuses. Just like my brother, Chris Feinberg said, the situation is worse. And on daily basis, the tenuous negations, negations of this engagement is in threatening. As we speak right now, there is so much poverty in the land. We are talking of insecurity. We are talking of poverty that is palpable and poverty. So there is no hope for Nigeria. Nobody is interested in Mr. President's promises. We are interested in delivery. We are sick and tired of the high blood pressure of deceptive veterans and an enemy of concrete performance. Deliver your promises. And have let Nigeria get out of this palace situation we find ourselves. There is no food. There is hunger. The security situation is getting worse by the day, faster by the day. So we don't want promises anymore. Please deliver. And look, action speaks louder than words. 
if you deliver, the people will realize that you have delivered. You are there, Mary Ann. Nobody can convince you that you're a man. It's not possible. No matter what they say, no matter the rationalists, no matter the rationalists, you know that you're a woman. So we are sick and tired of excuses. Deliver on the promises. And of course, that is so short. He has just two more years. He can hardly make any impressive impact between now and then. But there could be a difference. And that is what Nigeria has won. Not excuses anymore. Well, but the president is also asking for understanding. I did watch that video. In fact, we played it yesterday on our show, and he was asking for understanding from Nigerians. I'd like to read, um, you know, a, a little bit of what he said. What the on okay, Just sorry. hold on. He says, I expect Nigerians to be more understanding on the issues involved, looking at the available time and resources. Um, so... I'm trying to understand what the president means by looking at the available time and resources. Being that the president, I like to say, I like to say this because this is one of the reasons why the president won and became president of Nigeria because he did promise he was going to deal with insecurity, fight Boko Haram, give us employment, and was going to fight corruption. So what does the president mean by giving him understanding, bearing in mind the limited time and resources that are available? Do you have an idea what the president means by that? We can only extrapolate. Uh, but um, if we do, rightly too, because like you know, meaning is not in the message, but in the message user. Therefore, my own understanding is he's only trying to buy time. It's as simple as that. When he says give you more time, you told the world you understood the problems confronting this nation and gave the world the impression that you have the antidote. You can resolve all issues. You have the answers to the nagging problem. And six years into your administration, you're still begging for time when you know that constitutionally you cannot spend more than eight years in office. So what other time? You have just two more years. Are you going to achieve what you could not achieve in six years? So what time are you talking? This is just, the man just has just admitted his failure. And all he's asking for is just waiting for his failure to expect. Otherwise, what do you mean by time? For, for the, in the last six years, you could not deliver on your promises. And you believe that it is within two years you're going to deliver on those promises. It, I, it, as a president, there are certain words I cannot do. But it is incredible. Let me just put it that way. It is just incredible that Mr. President will ask for more time at this time. Mr. Finebone, um, I'm coming to you with this question. Um, many Nigerians have asked the president to come out and address us and make, it, make us feel like he understands the plight of Nigerians. Many have called on him to resign. Many have even asked for his impeachment, like the SAN, Femi Falana, has said that we have every right to impeach him. Um, civil society organizations, 200 of them, have come out to push for uh, Mr. President's impeachment on the floor of the National Assembly. But I want to ask you, as an, again, as an APC member and someone who supports Mr. President, is the president ignorant of the plight of Nigerians? Does he not have an idea of what Nigerians are passing through? Um, I mean, because he always reacts to um, stories or breaking news of banditry or Boko Haram or kidnappings uh, by saying that he's shocked and surprised. Um, does he really understand what we're, we're going through as a country right now? Because there have also been cases where presidential aides have said that we are blowing the issues out of proportion. No, no, no. I, I, don't, I don't think uh, anybody will be right to assume that uh, the president uh, is not aware of what is happening. No. Um, he's not the talking type, and we must excuse him that. He has his style. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. Did you say he's not a talking type? I remember this president. He, Before he not, became president, there are, there are, he was very vocal, some, very vocal man when he was there a candidate. Are quite some, there are quite some persons that are gifted with such loquacious uh, uh, gifts. He's not. He's not an orator at all. He's none of those. And he's, he's not loud to. And so that is his style. It doesn't mean he's removed from the reality of the, you know, in the nation today. No. Uh, it's just a matter of style. He prefers his spokespeople, uh, spokesmen speak for him. He believes that it makes it doesn't make much difference. Well, Nigerians have a right to say no. We want to hear from you, yourself, and um, I, I believe that uh, with time he will also uh, act 
in line with the request of Nigeria. I'm sorry, Mr. Feinborn. Um, how long will we wait for the president to make up his mind and begin I'm, to I'm laughing, think laughing. if he's going to address us? Because I'm sorry, do, do you need to be an orator to, as a president, a leader of uh, the most populated African country, to speak to your people, people who have been killed, people whose farmlands have been destroyed, people whose family members have been kidnapped. Do you necessarily have to be an orator or be uh, given the best gift of the gap to be able to you, speak to your people? You could, you could choose to speak to your people directly. You could also choose to speak to your people through your aides. I'm sorry. And did, this I'm so this sorry. Once again, just one, just one more time. Who did Nigerians vote for uh, in 2015? You never voted. You voted for for President. Bu I mean, uh, General Buhari, as if he was there. But he, you never voted for him that he would be jack of all trade. You voted for him because you believe that he can hire those who will work for him and work with him. And so, if he chooses a few things that will have to be done by those around him, we should oblige him that. Hmm. We should oblige him that. If he decides that his ace should speak for him. Let's oblige him that. Okay, oh, Oponabo, I heard you trying to uh, uh, interject. No, no, I didn't try to. I just, just shuffled. I didn't, I didn't try to interject. No, I just laughed. And, <laughs> and, uh, because I, I, I realized that my brother is seriously struggling in order not to offend, uh, offend anybody. <laughs> but he knows the truth. Um, the fact remains that, like Redley said, we voted for Mr. President. And we are not saying Mr. President should be garrulous, come out and speak on every issue. That is not the position. But on very sensitive matters, especially matters that bother on security, that bother on lives, it is incumbent on Mr. President to come as, and assuage the feelings of Nigeria, not by proxy, but personally. This is done worldwide. And I should not be different. People will tell you everybody has a style. Even the arm robber has a style. But is the arm robber style legitimate? Is it acceptable? That is the question. You are not the president of your home. You are not the president of Buhari's home. You are the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And you, it is incumbent on you to ensure that you cannot please everybody, that at least you satisfy majority of Nigerians. And if Nigerians are saying, we want to hear from you, what is wrong with that? Okay. What is wrong with that? Okay. At least even if you are not an orator, you can express yourself in English. Okay. So what is, why is it so difficult to come and address Nigerians? What is wrong with that? All right, in closing, gentlemen, because we're almost out of time, I'm going to pose this question to Mr. Feinborn and then Mr. Uh, Inkotara, you would round up. Uh, on restructuring, the Senate president has um, smacked governors of the South on the head uh, with the issue of restructuring. He's saying that the governors of the South should not be in the forefront of calling for restructuring because in their states, they've been unable to show that, um, you know, um, that united front for restructuring, that they're not restructuring in their states. He's talked about the issues of local government autonomy and, of course, judicial autonomy. And, and, and so why should governors be pushing for federal restructuring? So my question is, should we jettison the idea of restructuring entirely because states are not doing it? No, 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 I don't think we should. Um, even the APC as a party has a, you know, has a, a document already put together on structuring, uh, restructuring. And um, I think it was uh, being uh, driven by um, Governor El Rufai and all that. But it shouldn't be. No, 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 no. I do not agree that it should be jettisoned. No. Um, for the Senate president to hammer on the issue of uh, restructuring, I don't think that was the only item that the governors dealt with. So it was not proper for him to think that uh, he could just use restructuring to cancel out all of the other issues that uh, the governors raised. For example, this um, the matter of uh, open grazing. Even all the governors in the past have had reason to agree that open grazing was obsolete, was antiquated, and should no more 
be patronized. And uh, if the South South governors raise that as a key issue that has always caused conflict, I think they were, I mean, they, 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 their thought was in depth enough to try to uproot the causal factor of conflict in most of our communities by saying, stop this archaic style of moving cattle from Sokoto to Potakot. And, you know, patronize, uh, 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 you know, special areas where you can graze these things, transport them by either train or by trailers to locations where the meat is required, and you sell them. Okay. And uh, I don't think that is too bad a thing. I, I, when I look okay. at pictures of we our cattle here that have trekked over a very long distance, you now find you look at them and they look emaciated and all that. Hmm. But <laughs> if choosing, if if actually uh, the governors have to, you know touched on the issue of uh, open grazing, it should be accepted. It should be a lot okay. of things. For me, I'm even calling that the states should. Uh, should uh, make laws. All right, Mr. All right, Mr. Punabo so, so, in Kotaya, please come in quickly. We need to wrap this up now. Oh, well, I think um, the the umbrage taken at the comments of um, or the resolution of the governors is simply because they are now because the, the speaker and the senior president believe that the government the governors are suffering from what I say Mazar syndrome and Mazar complex. These governors are as guilty, if not worse than the people they are accusing, in other words, the federal government. Look at the local government. The local governments are not functioning because the governments have made them so. Then you have legislative enslavement, you have judicial desecration just because of executive rascality. So I don't think they are really talking of the issues raised, but rather, but unfortunately, they could not distinguish the message from the messenger. The uh, resolutions are in sync with the yearnings of Nigerians. Every Nigerian is it's in agreement with the resolution of the government. Every Nigeria. But sadly, what they are saying is that you are not the right kind of people to do this. Well, unfortunately, as elected representatives of the people, they have a right to speak. They also speak. Okay. But what they are actually saying is that you are as guilty as those you are accusing. Because okay. the governors are megalomaniacs. Look at what they do to local government. Look at even what they do to the judiciary. Look at what they do to the legislative arm. So that is just the truth about it. Okay. Otherwise, the points raised are salient, and those are points that can address some of the burning issues in the country. All right. I want to say thank you to you, Opunaboyin Kotara, former special uh, advisor to a River State Governor, and, of course, uh, Mr. Chris Feinborn, used to be the former APC spokesperson in River State. Thank you, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, what is the fate of 2023's election? Amidst all of this insecurity in the country, is INEC the new target? Stay with us. <laughs>